Mr. Valenzuela, it is your claim that the defendant, who is a friend of yours, owes you for some small loans that you made to him? Yes. And then it is your claim that he had you falsely arrested? Yes. And you want damages for that? You've known him for a while, according to your complaint. You knew him, you were friendly with him, and then he moved out of state and then moved back. Where did you move to, sir? To Colorado. And you moved to Colorado from where? From Texas. And in Texas is where you knew the plaintiff? Yes. In what year did you move to Colorado? 2019. And in what year did you move back to Texas? This year, 2022. Okay. And why did you move back? Why did I move back? You moved to Colorado for what? My family was up there, yeah. And then my family went back to Texas. Oh, so you moved with your family? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 29. Did you live with your family in Colorado? No, we didn't all live together, no. The reason you say you came back to Texas was because your family came back? Yeah. Did you have a job? Uh, yes, I did. Where? I worked from home. What kind of work? For a newspaper. In Colorado? Yes. What did you do in Texas? Uh, whenever I moved back, I was still working from home, but um, they let me go. It was, I got laid off. When did you get laid off? Uh, I would say June. June of this year? Yes, ma'am. And what month did you move back to Texas? Oh, I had already moved back in May. When you moved back in May, where did you go to live? I was living in hotels. But there came a point when you had no money. It got to a point. When did it get to a point when you had no money? Maybe July. And when did you contact Mr. Valenzuela? I'd say July. Do you didn't contact him in May before, when you came back? I just uh, want to say that's a lie. When did you contact him? I mean, we talked while I lived in Colorado. You know, we always text each other, so. Well, when you contacted him in July, what did you say to him? I couldn't say exactly what I said, but. The, give me the gist of it. Let me borrow some money, I guess. Okay. Um, and you needed it for living. Right. And what did he say to you? Um, he did, sometimes, if I asked him. Okay. And how much did he give you? Uh, here and there, maybe 100, maybe two. Every... No, all together. All together? Oh, I couldn't say how much altogether. You maybe, couldn't say? I couldn't say, maybe a few hundred. Did he give you money for housing? Uh, a couple times he did. How much? A hundred here, a hundred Do you have there. a record of how much you gave him, sir? I do. Okay, because he's already said, and would you read that back to me, Whitney, please, about borrowing? He said, let me borrow some money. Right, okay, let me borrow some money. So tell me how much money you let him borrow. 1,200. Show me. Okay, now tell me what that is that you're giving him, all those papers that you expect me to read. These are screenshots of every time I sent him money. Oh, can I see it, please? Okay, get ready, Sarah Rose. Is suing his former friend, Darian Jenkins, for unpaid loans and damages from an assault. So every time you gave him money... He agreed to pay me back. No. no, he's already told me that he called you and asked if he could borrow some money, and you said yes, and he said, I don't know how much it was. So if he doesn't know how much it was, you have screenshots of it, and Sarah is going to add them all up. Okay. Of all the money that you said that you borrowed from him, how much did you pay back? Uh, one, one, 120. Good guess. Did he give you back $120? No. Did he give you back anything? No. Nothing ever? No. Okay. So while Sarah is adding that up, there came a point when you left the hotel. Is that right? Yes. And Mr. Valenzuela probably got tired of giving you money and said that you could stay in a spare room in his house. For the most part, yes. And you moved in in August of 2022, the end of August. Yes. And then in September, you had an a fight. I don't care what the fight was about. It became physical? Uh, he was physical, yes. No, no, I wasn't, Your Honor. No, okay. I wasn't. Let's say you had an argument that spilled out into the street because this becomes very important because there's the other charge is false arrest. And it was a false arrest, you claim, based on his statement to the police that you assaulted him. Right. Right. He says, yes, you had an argument, but you weren't arrested on his allegation that you assaulted him but you were arrested and held on an outstanding warrant. When the police responded, they found that there was an outstanding warrant. So now I want you to tell me in September of 2022, did you have an outstanding warrant? 
That's either a yes or a no. Well, it was on a payment plan. I don't care what it was. Did you have an outstanding warrant? Yes. And the outstanding warrant was for a what? Traffic tickets. What kind of traffic ticket? I think I was speeding and I didn't have my license either. So speeding, driving without a license. What else? You have insurance? I think it was insurance. Not think, not think. Speeding, driving without a license, and no insurance. And no tags. And no tags. And for that, you got fined. Yes. And you didn't pay the fine. I was paying it. Well, there wasn't a warrant outstanding because you were cooperating and paying the fines. The county that I'm in, they said, the police officer said, it doesn't matter if you're on a payment plan, they'll arrest you if they want to. Mr. Valenzuela, did you miss payments on your fine? Yes. Perfect. And so when the police responded to this kerfuffle that was out in the street, when they ran both your names, your name came up with an active warrant. Yes. Well, that's easy. So that you were arrested on the outstanding warrant. I would have never been arrested, though, if he wouldn't have acted. If he didn't he call did. the police. No, he didn't call the police. Who did? My neighbor did, because the way he was acting. So your neighbor called the police, but for the outstanding warrant, I don't know whether the police would have taken you into custody. You had an injured lip. They could see that your lip was bloody. You say he fell, must have fallen outside. You don't know how that happened. It's really not relevant to this case. But if I were the police and I showed up, you didn't have any visible injuries, right? No, you had a busted lip. If you both are alleging that there was a fight, police would look at you and say, well, he's injured. He's got a busted lip, got to sew it up. They wouldn't have arrested you unless you had a warrant, right? Right. Good. So that's not his fault that you had a warrant. It's not his fault. Have that total. It's $2,727. And 56 cents, and that's including some direct payments to Motel 6s and other housing accommodations. Includes that? Yes. In addition to direct payments to the defense. Great. He says you didn't make any payments. 27 27. I mean, there's no way he expected me to pay. Uh, I never said I was going to pay him that back. Well, you told me that you asked him if you could borrow some money. That's A what couple you said. times I asked to borrow money, but the entirety of that, all that, like, I didn't say I was going to pay that back. He should know I. He was, he was just being nice. He was being and nice. Sometimes he offered Not that. anymore. Yeah, not anymore. You have a job now? Yes. Okay, great. 2727, judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Mr. McPherson. Yes. How old are you, sir? 40. What kind of work do you do? Home care eight. Independent or do you work for a company? Home care eight agency. For an agency? Yes. How long have you been working for them? About a year now. But I've been doing home care for about three years. Prior to working for them the past year, and you're still working for them, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. Was there a period of time when you were unemployed? Not more than maybe three weeks, but since I know Ms. Hall... No, I don't want to know about Ms. Hall. No, I'm saying, I'm telling you my employment that Since I've lived in her residence, I've always worked. I've worked at the zoo, no, 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 Census no, no. Bureau. Don't try to think ahead of me. Okay. There was a period of time in 2020, according to you, that you became homeless and were living in a shelter. Yeah, that just, and that was in what month in 2020? In June. I, so if I can explain the situation, I was living in a house that a slumlord wasn't doing the repairs. So I ended up forcing his hand, him selling the property, and the new landlord and my. Could you look at me when you're talking? I'm sorry. The new landlord and her and my other ex, they kept the property. I moved out. I went to a shelter because I didn't want nothing to do with her or, or the... With, or, you're talking about her? No, man. Well, I'm then don't keep about, pointing to her. I'm asking you... I'm just pointing in general. I'm not pointing no, but at you her. Were, you actually pointed I'm sorry. to her. When you were in the shelter, mm -hmm. were you employed? Yes, for the Census Bureau, okay. going to the Census. I was actually out on the field knocking on doors. I was an enumerator. So you were not working in home health care. You were a census taker. At that time, yes. And did you have a child living with you? Yes. Well, Just, that's not it. in the shelter, no. I could oh. not have my daughter in the shelter. How old is your daughter? Ten. And where is her mother? She's deceased. Where was your daughter living when you were in the shelter? With my mother. Is she living with you now? She's been with me since June. In a new apartment? Yes. I moved in August 1st. She goes to school from your apartment? Yes. Okay. In 
2020, you became acquainted with Miss Hall, and there came a time shortly thereafter, uncross your arms, and there oh, came a point shortly thereafter when you moved into her home. In August, yes. Of 2020. Mm -hmm. And you remained in her home until what month and year? August of 2022. And in what month and year did you regain custody of your daughter? June of 2022. So there was a period of two months when you and your daughter lived in Miss Hall's home. You could say that, but... Well, I'm saying that because I just asked you a question about timeline. No, no because me and Miss Hall was going through our dispute about this money, my daughter was staying with my grandma. I, I only brought my daughter there on certain occasions. When I say you regained custody of your daughter, was that a court order? Yes, I have it just, right here. Just a second. Was the child removed by court order from your custody? It was removed because the house... I, don't tell me because. Yes, it, it was, was Yes, yes, the, yes, yes. I have lots of things to do today. Okay, I'm sorry. Child was removed from your custody... Because I didn't have nowhere to live at the time. Was the child removed from your custody before you moved into the shelter? She was removed because I was in the shelter. Did you take her to the shelter? No, I was not allowed to because okay. there's no men So at that time, female did she go and free. live with your mother? Of course. Was that by court order? No, it was... I brought when, her to yeah, your mother. Yes. Sydney. May I see the court order Thank that you. involves custody, please? Here you go. I'm not getting an answer. This is the court order, and this is okay. these two forms. Now, that court Thank is you. the current... Shh. Okay, so the child was placed with the Commissioner of Social Services in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And the child was placed in kinship foster care, which is a program that I am very familiar with, with the child's paternal grandmother. So in June of this year, the child was returned to your custody. At some point in August of this year is when you and the defendants separated and you left the house. This is your claim. Your claim is that you won a whole bunch of money in some gambling thing. What kind of gambling thing? Gerald McPherson claims his ex-girlfriend, Natasha Hall, wrongfully spent the money he gave her for rent. Your claim is that you won a whole bunch of money in some gambling thing. What kind of gambling thing? I want you to look at me when you talk, not at the papers. I, no, I was going to... Um, in what kind of gambling thing did you win money? I bet it on 25 games. What 25 games? NBA, college, hockey. Okay, and you bet where? On FanDuel. It's, it's an app called FanDuel. Okay, and you, you won. Yes, I don't understand the whole thing. I don't want to learn the whole thing. I don't care about the whole thing. I just want you to tell me how much you won. Before taxes or after? Both. Okay, 36772 dollars and after taxes, $26,889. On what date? So I won the bet on the 28th. It came into my 28th account. 28th of what? January. Of what year? This year. And you had been living with Miss Hall for two years? Prior, yes. Okay, and you were working according to you all of that time? Yes. Okay, good. Were you paying any rent yes, to Miss Hall? Yes, I have receipts. Yes, I want to see those. How much rent were you paying? So when I met Miss Hall... I don't want to go back to the year, Gimmel, sir. All I want you to do is tell me how much rent you were paying her. To be honest, I had to pay half I don't half know, I want you to rent. be dishonest with her. Half her rent is like four twenty five, and she had me pay half the gas and half the electric and half the cable. Her rent was four twenty five. No, it was eight fifty. I had to split it. We're paying half and half. Miss Hall? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work do you do? I do customer service. And who else lives in the apartment with you? My children. How old are they? 14 and 13. How large is the apartment? It's a two-bedroom. And the total rent is 850? Yes, ma'am. There's no subsidy in the No subsidy no. at all. Okay. And you have a lease? Yes, ma'am. How much did you charge, if anything, Mr. McPherson as rent? 425. Well, that doesn't quite sound fair, does it? Did she make a figure with you of $425? I paid more than that. I paid $425. That's half of the rent. I paid half of the electric and half of the internet bill. There are four people in the house. Yes. Right? Why is well, he paying we're for... only Shh. two people. Why was he paying for half the rent? Oh, my children don't work, and his child didn't work either. His child wasn't with you. The child came with us in June, but she had in visitations June. on weekends. I don't care if she has visitations. Your children live with you. Yes. They don't have to work. They're your children. 
they're not his responsibility. Okay, I just want to know where everybody's head is at. There came a point, Ms. Hall, when Mr. McPherson gave you $6,000 in cash. No, not in cash. Check. No, uh, one was, both of them were wired. One was directly wired into our Bank of America account. What? Just a second. When? The first transaction was on July, I mean, January 31st. The second transaction- January 31st of? This year. And the second transaction was the next day, February 1st. $12,000 total. Do you acknowledge Ms. Hall receiving $12,000 in your account from Mr. McPherson, or do I have to look at his records? I do not acknowledge. He gave me $6,000 and $4,500. $6,4500, Mr. McPherson. Does that sound right? You. I'm gonna sh No, it's not right, and I'm going to okay. show you. Let me see your bank record. All right. Hey, and sir. Let us assume, let us assume that it's $6,4500 that he gave you in this year, 2022. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Let us assume for the moment that you're correct because you're suing for 6000 Yes. Right? Yeah, because the first initial 6000 was eight months rent. That, that I'm not Let us assume for. that you are correct, that he gave you $6,4500. i am taking you at face value in January and February of 2022. Yes, ma'am. What was the money for? That he gave me? Yes. The two different amounts sure. of money. Yes. There's a 6000 mm -hmm. and a 4500 40 Five hundred was for me to pay my car note off, and hey, just a second. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Why would he pay your car note off? He said he wanted to. Oh no, that's ridiculous, Miss Hall. Let me so, just check. Can I say Shh. something? No. He even wrote that on there for your car note. No, you said in January he won a bet and cashed it out. A few days later, he gave me money via cash app to catch up on his rent and as a thank you for helping him out. I don't see anything here about gift for a car note in your answer. So he gave me the money for the car note, and as far as the cat money, lots of times. So, yeah. No, I'm did. talking about the $6,000, madam. Yes. Let us assume he gave you $4,500 mm -hmm. to pay off your car note. That's what you said. Correct. What's the $6,000 for? The $6,000 was for us to move. For who to move? Me and him. Show me. The $6,000? Yeah, show me that there's proof. Yeah. He says he gave you the money according yeah. to his complaint to hold for him. Yes. Shh. We Just a second. Yeah, February 3rd, he gave you $6,000. This just says he gave it to you. Yes. And? And he told me to hold it so we can move. Well, you didn't move. No, she you didn't. didn't move. Shh. She just said, he told you to hold it yeah. for him so that you could all move. No. So he who could me, move? So me and him and our children could move. Well, that's what I just said. I apologize. So that we could move. Correct. But you didn't move together. Correct. So you have to give him his money back. That's thank simple. You, thank just, you, thank just you, thank you. That's simple. If you say he gave you the money so that the two of you could move and that event never took place, but he in fact moved out, you owe him $6,000. But then he agreed. That's, just a second. That's an easy. Okay. Do I have to deal with anything else? Money for lost wages, rent, utilities, forget it. He paid all of that with the $4,500 when he paid off your car note. Come on, let's get it together. Lost wages. What are the lost wages for? But then I had to take off from work because of the PFA, and I had to take off from work to go uh, file out the court and things like that. But in the rent's midst of uh, him saying the $6,000, he didn't pay rent. He didn't pay all of his rent. He paid off your car note. You owe him $6,000. Yeah. Your counterclaims dismissed. We're finished. Thank you very okay. much with him. Yes, I did. Did you graduate from high school? Uh, yes, I did. When you were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, did you live with your father? Uh, at the age of 15, I moved out because... Okay, so at age 15, you moved out? Yes. Because here you said, when I was 18, my father kicked me out of the house for no good reason. Yes. Guess what? Well, you just told me that you left the house when you were 15. Yes, and I lived with my mother for two years, and... Okay, so from age 15 to 17, you lived with your mother? Yes. Is that because you were having difficulty with your father? Uh, yes. Okay, and then you went to live with your mother. Uh, yes. But that didn't last. No. So now, at 17, you go back to your father. Yes. And you stayed with him until you were 18. Yes, correct. So, so far, I have the fact that your family is a little dysfunctional, but that you had certain problems. Um, so I moved out when I was 18. Just and... a second. Would that be a fair statement, that you had some problems? 
No, it would not be. Okay. What high school did you graduate from? It's a school partnered with the National Guard for kids that are off track to get them back on track. Did you have to pay for that school? Uh, no, they are paid by the government. Could you look them up for me? Yeah, it's a residential program for youths aged 16 to 18 who've dropped out of school or who are seriously behind in credits and need to catch up quickly. Okay, so you were dropped out of school? Oh, uh, no. Or My... seriously behind? Yes. Dropped out or behind in credits. Okay. And how old were you when you graduated from... I was 17 years old. And so at that point, you moved in with your father? Uh, yes. And why did you leave when you were 18? He had evicted me. Okay. And I'd like you to tell me your version of his evicting you when you were 18, because this case involves you're suing your father for things, items that he disposed of that were yours, and you want this court to award you $7,400 for the things that he disposed of that were yours. Yes. Okay. So tell me why you believe he evicted you when you were 18. I believe he evicted me when I was 18 because I was buying my first car and he got jealous of the car I had and he stated that when I moved back in for the second time. Um, he evicted me the second time. No, no, no. Where on the first time that your father evicted you? Not the second time. The first time your father evicted you, I can ask him or you want me to stay with you? You can ask him. Fine. Tell me why you evicted her the first time, which you did. The main reasons would be that she agreed to pay rent, which she never did. She needed she working? to- uh, Off and on. I'd say over the past two years, she's probably had, from my guesstimate, 15 to 20 jobs, all ranging from an hour or a day, I think the longest being about three months. Can't maintain a job, would prefer to smoke pot all day in her room and hang out with her boyfriend, basically. Which at the time, for the first eviction, she did not know Corey. Okay. But she still does the same thing. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. That's what you indicate here. So that was the reason that you evicted her the first time. And that was maybe in June? Uh, I would have filed that June 9th of 2021. June. Okay. But she came back shortly thereafter, in October. The sheriffs removed her August 13th, 2021. Is that because you asked her to leave and she wouldn't? Uh, it's a three-step process. And I had a 24-hour notice posted to the door after 34 days. Well, you, I mean, she's your daughter. Yeah. So there must have been some discussion, Mr. Irwin, with her, you saying to her, listen, this is not working out. There wasn't a discussion, Your Honor. Was not? I served her the first notice. We talked about it. Oh, you talked about it? Prior to me filing. I told her I would do it. I don't think she believed me. She knew you wanted her to leave as a result of that discussion? Yes. And she didn't? She did not. She had lived with you off and on, with the exception of two years that she lived with her mother, and part of it in a residential program. It's a residential program, correct? Yes. When she lived with you, she was 10 years old. Can you tell me, Mr. Irwin, from the time she was 10 until the time she was 18 and she was ultimately evicted, what items in the house she purchased? Bed, TVs, anything big? She never purchased anything. When she came back from her mother, what did she come back with? I believe just a few clothes and a bag. She had to kind of run back. And to the best of your knowledge, had your daughter maintained any sort of gainful employment the last three years? No. So other than the clothes she came back with when she was 17, there were no big ticket items? Uh, there were a few by the time I had to evict her the second time, but I would have furnished those being, you know, bed set, furniture, bed. tempur -Pedic. Bed. I think that's part of what she's really wanting out of this 7,400. Okay, so you purchased a bed? Yes. Because you didn't have one in the room where she was? I was just trying to take care, yeah. I uh, was using the room for my own purposes. I live alone until she moved back in and um, usually welcoming of my daughter coming home. So I furnished a room. Okay, so that's why you left the first time. The first time you left because he got annoyed that you were hanging around doing nothing I and smoking pot. Rent. Right. Too. Right. Not and we're doing, we're, weren't doing it much. No, I was not smoking often. We're not doing much, is what I said. Yes, I had a job. I worked at the beginning of the year. For how many days? I worked there for about three months. And then I worked as a kennel technician for about two months. What happened to both those jobs? My dad, he would, he, his alcoholism, he would never let me sleep in the room as I was paying rent and he would That's lock me true. out. He would lock me I, out. I, he, just, I, he would lock me out and he would flip the garage switch so I wasn't able to get access to the house. I wasn't able to get clean, so I couldn't obtain the job and my mental health wasn't there for that job. So that's why I took the kennel technician okay. job and that's when he evicted me. 
Where are you living now? Uh, with my boyfriend. That's him? Yes. And where are you working now? I am unemployed. Sorry, that's easy. So now you're not working. Now nobody's locked you out. Nobody's made it impossible for you to work. And what kind of work does your boyfriend do? He is construction. I do DoorDash. Okay. Your boyfriend is construction? Yes. How old is he? He is 20 years old. You're Corey. Yes, Your Honor. Who do you live with? Uh, my mom and her new husband. How did I know that? <laughs> How did I just know that? It's so perfect to be old that, I mean, I ask the questions. I could have asked the questions and answered the questions. So you and your girlfriend live with your mother? Yes, Your Honor. Did you graduate from high school? Yes, Your Honor. And what's the name of the company that you work for? Uh, Landscape. Do you work for them full time? Yes, I do. For how long? I've been working for them about two months now. Two months? Yes. Prior to that, what did you do? Um, I worked for Chewy. Chewy, the dog products? Yes, Your Honor. What happened to that job? Um, I just wasn't liking the job anymore, and I thought I could do a lot harder work, and that's what I strive to do is just continue trying to be the best person I can. And what does your girlfriend do all day when you're out in your landscaping job for the last two months? Um, she stays busy uh, going to the gym and making sure that everything is in tip-top shape and just bringing me lunch when I'm on my break for work. And you're living in your mom's house. Be a fair statement. You don't have to be a math wizard, which I am not, because you don't have enough money to move out into your own place. Yes, Your Honor. Does your mom work? Uh, yes, she does. Who else lives in the house? Uh, her newly husband. Now you have a room in your mom's house? Yes, Your Honor. Is it furnished? Yes, Your Honor. Who bought the furniture? I bought the bed set and... Tell me when you bought the bed set. I bought it about two years ago because we moved there recently. So what you're telling me is you purchased a new mattress? Yes. With your earnings? Yes, Your Honor. And how much was it? It was about 1500 and if you left the house, you would want to take your mattress because you bought it. Yes, Your Honor. You wouldn't take any of the other furniture in the house because you didn't buy it. Yes, correct. Whether it's your dresser or a TV in your room, your parents bought that. Yes. The mattress you bought. Yes, Your Honor. Now you can sit. 19-year-old Isabel Irwin claims her father, Neil Irwin, owes for personal belongings. Now. I'm going to sort of pull this together. Eventually, you moved back into the house after an initial eviction, and you weren't doing well, I assume. Yes. And then you came back a couple of months later and asked your father if you could move back in. Yes. And he said, OK. Yes. And that didn't work out. He was unhappy with the arrangement. I was paying rent before. He just, he was kicking no. me out, so I decided not to pay rent. Whatever the reason, he wasn't happy with it. You were gone for a couple of months. He evicted just, me, yes. Yes, well, he evicted you for a reason, Miss Irwin. You have to stop being a baby. He evicted you for a reason. He took you back because you went there. You said, I have no place to go. I assume, without going into specifics, because you look a little frightened, and I don't have to get that crazed with you because it sounds like a very sad situation. He said, it's not working out again. I want you to leave. And when you left, you did not, according to you, take your stuff. And your father, at some point, after he received a text message from you, which I assume you have, sir? I do. Which said, have a nice life. After he received that, waited a while and that disposed. That was a statement I made because I asked him to help me fill up my tires because they needed air. And I saw him pull into the Safeway parking lot and leave with his groceries. And he never helped me. OK. So you said, have a nice life. And then you want a whole bunch of things from the house. Now, I want you to tell me, with your limited work history, which you have, hardly enough to sustain yourself, because in October, you came back to him and said, I need a place to live. So I want you to tell me what you purchased. I purchased the Tempur-Pedic bed. And who did you purchase it from? My father. You purchased it from your father? Yes, he made the original purchase and said I could just uh, give him the money, which I did. OK. And how much did you give him for the mattress? $3,000. That's show, incorrect. Show me that you gave him $3,000. I can't figure that you had saved $3,000. I gave him that to purchase the mattress because that was the time I was purchasing my car. How could you purchase a car? You don't work. You don't work. So 
the first this one was doesn't tell me anything. Transaction this that just doesn't tell, this doesn't tell me anything. You want to tell me that tells me nothing. You want to give that to her. I would have to find credible, Miss Irwin, that you had managed to save from your job that you had for three months while you claim you were paying your father rent $3,000. It was the leftover money from me purchasing my car. Oh, that, I don't believe that. For one second. Okay, you want to tell me about the mattress, sir? Okay, simply put, I got one for myself uh, when she wasn't living with me, and the mattress I furnished her with is a floor model. He gave me a good deal on it. I get retails about 3,500. I got it for 2,300. My daughter and I did have an agreement that she could purchase the mattress for $1,800. However, as you may have figured out, that did not occur. And this was after she moved back in October or when she was? Yep, yes it was. After she moved back in October? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, the mattress is staying where it is. Okay, now let's go to dresser, nightstand, and TV. So you acknowledge that none of those things you purchased, bed, dresser, nightstand, and TV. No, I did not purchase them. Okay, now that's your father's. He threw out my clothes, shoes, and jewelry. Now, you were evicted. Yes. Was it an actual eviction? Did marshals come to the house? Um, no. I got served the eviction notice on June 30th. He illegally locked me. No, 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 no. Just June 30th. Yes. So on June 30th, you were given an eviction notice that said that you had to be out on what date? In 30 days. Okay. So far, is that correct, Mr. Irwin? It's fairly correct. I do have the 30-day no-cause notice to quit that she was oh. served. Okay. And but on it... what date did you leave? On Ju July 1st, because he had thrown a can. Just a second. Boyfriend. You left on July 1st? Yes. Tell me how you left. I packed a small bag, and I had left. You packed a small bag that contained what? A few of my clothes and whatever I could grab for a few nights. And where did you go? To my boyfriend's house. So you went to Corey's house? Yes. Do you have a laptop? I do not. Do you have a phone? Yes, I do. Did you take the phone? Yes, I did. You took some clothes with you, and you knew that, that you had an eviction notice, correct? Yes. Tell me what jewelry you allege your father threw out. He threw out my necklace my boyfriend had bought me. He okay. threw out... Which boyfriend? Uh, this boyfriend, Corey. Tell me about the necklace. Uh, he had purchased it for my birthday. Okay. Stand up, Corey. Tell me about the necklace you purchased. Uh, I had purchased it from K Jewelers. I had purchased it for about $250. Okay, when? On her birthday, just a little before. When's that. her birthday? Uh, February 20th. Did she wear the necklace? Yes. Every day? Uh, no, just on occasions, whenever we'd go out and do stuff and all that. When she came to your house with her bag, did you ever see the necklace again? No, I did not, Your Honor. Do you know where this necklace is? I do not. Did you throw away a necklace? I guess anything's possible because when she left and sent me the have a nice rest of your life text, it looked like a hoarder's room. So I guess anything could have been in there. Who cleaned it up? I did. Didn't see a necklace? Didn't see a necklace. Okay. Were you looking for anything of value? I wasn't looking for anything. To me, it looked like old clothes that probably hadn't been worn in years. Okay. I just wanted to okay. clear out the room. Okay, fine. Have a seat. Other than that necklace, what other jewelry did you have? I had some rings I purchased from Ojai, California on a trip I previously took for my dad. Okay. What else? You took a bag of clothes. What specific? Because you had jewelry, shoes. I assume you took some shoes with you because no, you were going to be there not. when you were wearing a pair of shoes. Yes, I was. Okay. I was wearing my old shoes. Okay. When you got rid of all of the stuff, Mr. Irwin, you didn't go through any of it? No, I did not. Did you give her any notice that she had 10 days, two weeks to get her stuff? Uh, I did not give her notice. On what date did you dispose of all of her stuff? Uh, it would have been around July 20th, about 20 days after or so. Okay. Well, but even according to your eviction notice, she had 30 days to vacate. Well, if you read the actual eviction notice, it's five days. After five days, you have to file another part of the eviction notice, which is unlawful detainer, meaning that she is now there illegally. So she left within the five days okay. willfully. 19-year-old Isabel Irwin has accused her father, Neil Irwin, of throwing out her personal property. 
McNeil claims he paid for Isabel's belongings. Okay, so you didn't file the next step. I did not. So she left within five days. That was the yes. agreement. And she just left the place a mess. Is a mess, that... yes. Okay, who is this? This is my mother, Janice Leonard. Could you stand up, please, for a moment? Miss Leonard, how many grandkids do you have? Well, from Neil to I have six. Did you and Miss Irwin get along? Oh, yes, she came to, we lived in I Idaho at the time. I had an equestrian center. So every summer she would be there all summer long. We taught her to ride. She had the best horses. She jumped. She was a fantastic rider. But as the years went on, it was just getting more difficult. When she turned 14, her behavior changed drastically. Can you describe, I know that you moved back to where your son lived. And according to the answer, he gave you a key to the house. He was in Las Vegas on a trip. That's correct. Could you describe when you went into the house what Miss Irwin's room looked like? Every time I would go over there, the house would be worse every single day. And there was a very strong, pungent smell, so I thought the dogs were going to the bathroom. Her room was a total disaster. There's clothes literally strewn, I don't know how, how tall, but 12 inches maybe. Nothing was ever picked up. And one day, before Neil came back, I said, this place is really smelling bad. And later I learned that they were smoking marijuana. They would be in the bedroom and giggling and in the bathroom together. And when I would come, she'd only be there for maybe 20 minutes and they both would leave. There was no respect, I have to say. I've seen her in action and she can be very nice and very polite, but there's a whole nother side that is actually very scary to the point when she was years ago, 14, my husband and I were locking our bedroom door because we were afraid of her when she stayed. Okay, thank you. Isabel, is that what they call you or they uh, have a yes. shot? Isabel. Word of advice, caution, you're 19? Yes. You look older. That's not a compliment. You seem like an intelligent young woman. Thank you. But I see issues there of blaming everyone else. And it's very possible that your father and your mother and other people share the blame in your issues. That's possible. But at this point in your life, Isabel, you're just starting. And you can either spend your life blaming somebody else, parent, grandparents, siblings, for where you are, or you can say, I have to get myself some help and put a period, because I'm 19 years old and I want to live to be 79. And right now, that doesn't look good for you. I'm telling you, you look troubled and older than your years. Your father looks better. Your grandmother looks better. They look appropriate to their age and stage and clearer. So I think that you should get some help. I also think, Mr. Irwin, there were things in her room, and I believe me, I have seen rooms like that. You know, I have been involved with lots of kids and grandchildren. Most of them grow up, and once they get a place of their own, they walk around with a bottle of Windex and bounty and clean up after everybody's fingerprints. But if they're living in their parents' house or their grandparents' house, they live like slobs. Sometimes that never changes. But, you know, there's messy, and then there is dysfunctional. And what you are describing is dysfunctional. And I think if your daughter was honest, she would look and she would say, that's dysfunctional. You were in the room, Corey? Yes, Your Honor. Stand up. Would you describe your girlfriend's room in her father's house as evidence of being dysfunctional? Um... Uh, not a num. Right here, Corey. Okay. Does her room look like your room? No, it does not, Your Honor. Okay. Would your mother permit your room to look like her room? Uh... Oh, it's not an answer, Corey. Would your mother permit your room where you, that you're sharing to look like the room that was in his house where your girlfriend lived and you stayed occasionally? No, Your Honor. No. Okay, sit down. You should have looked for the necklace. He gave me an honest answer to everything that I asked him. So the necklaces was probably mixed in with a load of garbage that was there. To say the least. That was 
accumulated was like a quarter. So I'm a warning you. I have you, a video you, to your of the boyfriend. Room. Two hundred and fifty dollars to go and buy her a new necklace. Thank you very much. This case is over. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I agree with the judge's decision 100%. I think it was very fair. I think it wasn't fair. She has so much more potential than what she's doing right now. I was just trying to get my belongings, and he literally just never wanted me to do it. She's a Andrew is countersuing for emotional distress and attorney fees after Eve took their son. Okay. You bring a friend, you serve him personally with a summons and complaint. So the answer is, for three years, you did nothing. Now I'm going to find out why, after three and a half years, you filed this complaint over a $1,400 car. Now, Mr. Talon says in his cross-complaint that there came a time when you left the state, the jurisdiction, that was the child's home state. Yes. And when did you leave the jurisdiction? That was in September of 2021. And you went from where to where? We went from Florida. We stopped in South Carolina for a period of time. We had a little vacation before we had to go, because we were going to work. We were going to clear a property out for sale. So you left the jurisdiction with the child? Yes. Prior to that, Mr. Talon had been seeing the child regularly at his mother's house? Yes. Did you tell him you were leaving? Yes. What did he say when you told him you were leaving? He didn't really say anything. He just wanted to spend time with him, which he was, you know, they, they did spend time together before we left. Not I, before. After you left, you moved to New Jersey. I didn't move. I didn't move to New Jersey. What we did were, you do? So, like I said, we went there to liquidate a house that we have there. It took longer than expected. How long? It took about five months, six months. Things happened with the closing. Deals were made and fell through. Whatever. How long did you tell him you were going to be away? I was only supposed to be away for two weeks. That's a big deal, yeah. Miss Rockhill. That's a big deal. It is. Because if he says, I'm taking Eden for a two-week vacation, if that's okay, I know you took him away, I'd like to take him away for a two-week holiday, and he goes away for six months, you wouldn't like that? I, I would not. You would not. Well, he's a parent just like you are. That's what the law says. The law says men, women treated just about equally when they have a child. If you said to him, I'm going away for six months, and he said, okay, well, then you agree to. But you said, we'll be away for two weeks. And it lasted longer. Yes, that's... The and during the time that it lasted longer, about six months longer than it was supposed to, what arrangements did you make for your son to see his father? They had video calls regularly. Um, I would told him I would be back when, as soon as I could. Not I... Be just a second. So the answer is, you did not make any... Because he has a counterclaim here. Yes. And his counterclaim is for the fact that you took the child out of the jurisdiction and deprived him of the ability to see the child. Subsequently, due to circumstances, and I'm not sure what that is, the child is no longer in your custody. Temporary. The child is no longer in your custody. The child is in the physical custody of the paternal grandmother. Is that correct? And that is by court order? Yes. The beginning of that process was made in what month and year? July of 2022. Was that a child protective proceeding? It was, yes. And I assume that if there was a child protective proceeding that the court found that based upon whatever was alleged in the petition that was not brought by him but by the Department of Social Services or Child Welfare Administration, they found that the child would be at risk in your custody. Yes. And as a result of that, they took the child into care. And this is all stuff, because I've been here. I, you know, this, this, this is my bread and butter. Instead of placing the child in a strange foster home, they placed the child with the defendant's mother. Correct. For how long a period? 18 months? Indefinite. I, um, there's no specified period of time. However... Well, they have to... The court... If the court is placing a child through the state... Unless you relinquish your parental rights. Did you do that? No, I didn't. Okay. Unless you relinquish your parental rights or the court terminated your parental rights, they have to review this case periodically to see whether either one of you, as the parents, are ready to assume custody of the child. Right? So when is this case going to be reviewed? I believe the next review is in February. February of this of year? this year, correct, yes. That's a reasonable answer so that you do know. So that's the change in circumstance. Now, getting back, Miss Rockhill... To what motivated you after three years, after you gave him permission to drive the car and he had an accident, and you made up this whole baloney story in your complaint, 
that says, police arrested Andrew at the scene of the accident because I had previously filed a domestic abuse charge against him and there was a warrant. But you were living together. During the time that there was this outstanding warrant, you were living together and conceived a child with him. The child was already conceived. He was already born at the time of the domestic violence altercation. In he was about 2018? Four. In 2000, uh, the end of 2018, yes, he was born in August. The altercation happened, happened in November. So he was very young. But you reunited and were living together with him as a family. Yes. Right. The police arrested Andrew Ben on a domestic abuse charge, and there was a warrant. When Andrew was released from jail, he disappeared. So that's what, I... just a second, that's what you say here. He disappeared. My car was fully paid off, and I had no liability insurance. Andrew refused to pay for my total car, and he refused to see our son. He moved and went into hiding. That's what you signed. That's your complaint. I tried to file the small claims case against him several times, but could not find his current address. Well, that's not true. You knew exactly where he was until you moved out of the jurisdiction to New Jersey for six months because he had been regularly seeing his son at his mother's house. But he wasn't living at his mother's house. It doesn't time. make any difference. That's not what I, you say here. I did he may not have been living there. House. He may not have wanted you to know where he was living. He didn't, and that's well, why. So I... You moved. I didn't, though. He was not living at his mother's house at the time. That was just a place that he was visiting with Eden that I would bring him to. Perfect. So you would set the terms of that, and the terms were that he could see the child even without a court order because he was his father and had lived with him after he got out of jail. Yes. Lived with him, but you don't say here. After he got out of jail... But I, I didn't put that... I don't think you have a case. He drove the car with your permission. You were living together as a couple. You have a child together. Your case is dismissed. Now, I want you to tell me, sir, you have a counterclaim for her kidnapping your son, she left the jurisdiction. You call Child Protective Services. Yes, ma'am. Tell me when you call Child Protective Services, because that's the reason that this lawsuit came about. The last time I saw him before she left to stay with him was September 19th. Me and my family, we went to SeaWorld, and she was supposed to meet me. Uh, she said when we dropped off that he, she was going to meet me in Tampa. And when I called her, um, she said that she was in Jacksonville. She lives in Ocala, so she was, like, still, like, two hours north east of where... She lived, and she wasn't in Tampa, so I just decided just to take him home rather than argue. I took him home, and the house was just disgusting. Beer cans filled up in the, in the trash cans. It just, the, the living conditions were troubling. Was there a neglect proceeding? For this? The baby. I had an interview with, with the uh, caseworker or the investigator initially. Were you there in court when your yes, mother yes, was granted? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Was Miss Rockhill? Yes, she was there, too. You see your son regularly? Yes, ma'am. So the period of time when you did not see him was a six-month period, is that right? That was the second time. Yeah, it, was, it happened the year, bef the year prior. She did it before, too, where she removed him from school. Since I moved home in 2019, we've shared custody periodically until she decides that she wants to take him and not allow me to see him or for whatever reason. I think it's a control thing, and this was the second time. My counterclaim is for the second time. How long was the first time? Roughly the same time, five months, six months. Where did you go the first time? I didn't go anywhere. I actually received a text from his mother, Angel, um, to come pick up Eden. Andrew was using drugs again, and come pick up Eden would be easiest to do it while he was at school to avoid potentially traumatizing Eden. Did you send that email? I did not send her an email, no. Not a, a text. text message. I sent her a text message. Okay, just a second. You're his mother. Come. You sent her a text message. That's not something that she would make up because I'm going to ask to see it. She's going to show me. So did there come a time when you were concerned that your son was using drugs? Um, That's either a yes or a yes. no. Yes. And was it at that time that you suggested she come and pick up Eden? I told her to pick him up from school. I didn't tell her to come pick up Eden and take off for five months. I didn't take oh, off. Oh, OK. But you told her to pick him up from school. Yes. He knew where to find me. I was at the same address. I didn't leave anywhere. He's known where we've lived the entire time. He could have Couldn't come up and seen him. He, we could have met somewhere. I'm... Yeah, I don't know. You did, in fact, remove him the second I time for six, for six months. The second time, yes. I Not purposefully to keep him away from Andrew. We just, I mean, we had business to attend to, and it ended yeah. up taking a lot longer okay. than it now you see him, should have. Now you see him all the time. Is that right? I actually, I live back at home again. Once this happened, because... Just a I... second. So you live back at home with your mother? Yes, I see him every Since day. when? I've been living back at home for, I think, roughly a, a month or so. Where are you working? 
I work for a solar company. For how long? I, I went to jail for DUI last year. I got out. That's why I'm having to do the case plan because of my, my DUI. That was in like August 1st is when I started this job. Okay, are you working? I am, yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a dental assistant. Did you have a trial in the family court? Not yet. We're still awaiting adjudication. A full custody? Yes. But the child is with you under the auspices of Child Protective Services? Yes. Her trial is the 13th of February. For the neglect case? Yes. Is that correct? You have a lawyer there? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Your case against the respondent for the damage to the car three years ago is dismissed. Likewise, is your action against her for attorney's fees, the custody. Are you appearing in that custody case? I'm almost complete with my case plan. I will be there for that. Yes, ma'am. Good. So I suggest we not say anything nasty about each other yes, because there is always that strong probability that you're going to have to co-parent this child. It's never been a problem in the past. Good. Very good. Case is dismissed. Wait Thank up. you. What looks to be a complicated case actually is merely just a contract case. Ms. Dion, you had a side business of making baby shoes, and I assume that those are the baby shoes. Yes, it was a full-time The business. defendants had a children's clothing website, and they became familiar with your baby shoes, and they were interested in buying your business. You entered into a contract wherein I believe that they agreed to pay you $30,000 for the business. Is that correct? That was the asking price. There was never a written contract signed. That's incorrect. Just a second. You entered into a deal for... $30,000 and an employment contract without a written contract? I have the written contract here, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. I would say goodbye to you all if there wasn't a written contract. There was a draft of a contract, the terms of which changed numerous times over no, the no, no, years. No, no, can't, no. You can't change a written contract. Was it a written contract that was signed by both parties? No. It was never signed. He refused signed. to sign it, even though he was the one that wrote it himself and emailed it. Former employer, Scott Everson, breached their contract to buy her baby shoe business. Well, then there was never a meeting of the minds. May I see that? This is going to be a that's, much easier case than I thought. That's incorrect. I have Just audio. Just a second. This is going to be a much easier case than I thought. That's the latest draft of an agreement of which there were several drafts prior to that. Listen to me, sir. It doesn't make any difference to me. She's suing you because you paid her pursuant, I assume, under this non-contract, according to you, $31,000 that pay. was both for a piece of her business and for her staying on for a period of, I don't know, four months, six months? That was never um, oh, yeah. agreed to. Neither was the $30,000. Do you understand? You can't have it both ways. It's a complicated this is case. A, it's not complicated. It's very simple. You didn't have a written contract. If you had an oral contract, that's one thing. I do have that, actually. I have audio that we can play right now telling him that he promises to pay me $30,000 regardless of how long I worked for him. Just a second. The original deal that you had was for $30,000. There was actually an original deal that was much more than the contract he Ms. took Dion, months to how should, Ms. Dion, change to Ms. sign. Dion, there's no question that under the terms of what you both thought was reasonable, you agreed to accept $30,000 from him for the business, and you would stay with the business for a period of time, either four months or six months. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that is totally reasonable because he wasn't in the baby shoes business. According to your complaint, you were going through some marital difficulty, you were going through other major problems, and you called him within the period that you were supposed to be working for him and said, this is too much for me, I can't do it. I read your complaint. Do you understand? That's a breach of your contract, if there ever was a contract. That was, listen to if me carefully. Look in the contract, L listen, it says that he would take this, away $400 per week that I did not this, work for him. This is not, Staying listen to me, him. Mr. Young, listen to me very carefully. This is an un- signed contract. Why did you send it to me then? Just a second. He gave you $31,000. He did not. He gave me $5,000. Just a second. He says he gave you over the period of time $30,000. Did, did you not. give up? I have to Just, just a second. In the period of time that we've known Ms. Dion and worked with her, I've given her $31,668. I have proof that says that otherwise. Was... I'd like to see it. Here are my hours. No, 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 not, not. Those are paychecks, paycheck stubs. 
of which the, of the 31,000 she received, that 10, were not part were, of the business purchase pay, price. Listen, no, you're right. That was I, pay listen, stubs. I have to explain something to you. There was no written contract and clearly no meeting of the minds based upon what you both told me today. Shen, yep, what was yeah, I just a second. To do? I signed the contract and gave it back to him. Then you should have done nothing. If he didn't sign it, you should have done nothing. I was a single mother at the time. To the he did Dion, not. You have to understand. This is a court. He had Where's all this of my a court? assets. This is a court. It's not Dr. Phil. You had no written contract, and if you had no written contract, you had to have an have oral contract. I do. No, then you had to have an oral contract, and that oral contract clearly did not reflect a meeting of the minds of both of you. If he didn't sign this contract, and whether it was for your business or for your employment, are you saying to me that you did not receive from him? I'm just curious, because he has the documentation to show me that you did not receive from him $31,000. I have documentation. Stop. Just Sorry, I thought that was a question you asked. That me. was a question, that you did not receive from him. I don't care if it was the business or as a worker that you did not receive from him during a period of time $31,000. I did not. That's incorrect. I have my paychecks. I have the down payment that he made. I have the installments that he made. Uh, just a second. All, all of which add up much, to $31,000. Just a second. Add them up and I asked you a question. How much was it? Your paychecks and the down payment he made on your business. How much was it? I want to know if it was 30. He said it was $31,000. He paid me $16,666 for my business. My paychecks do not matter. They were not a part listen, listen, of the business did you file, agreement. Did you file your case in small claims? That is claim? not a part of my business. Did you file your case in small claims court? Yes. Very, Working just a second. hourly was not a part Ms. of Dion, the contract. Pay careful attention to me. If you filed your case in small claims court, I'm going to give you an opportunity to go back there. If you think you have a case, I do not. I do not believe that there was a meeting of the minds when there's a contract unsigned for over $10,000. That's absolutely ludicrous. As long as I'm comfortable with the fact that you got paid during a period of time, $30,000, so that you worked and you got paid, the contract for the sale of the business, as far as I'm concerned, was never consummated. I'm going to let you go try to explain your position to a judge in either superior court, because I don't think small claims courts hear cases up to $10,000. I don't know where you're from. That's where are you correct. from? Utah. It's actually $11,000 hmm? in Utah. Well, go back to Utah. This case is dismissed without prejudice. We're done. This court is adjourned. I reminded him over the period of two months. Paid her $31,000 for her time in her business. Give me the contract, give me the contract, give me the contract. She wanted a job, that's how she first approached us. She applied for a job with us. My working for him hourly was never part of the agreement. I wish I had been more careful. I'll see him back. Melissa Duran is suing her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, for wrongful eviction and an assault. Court come to order, all rise. Be seated. You used to live. Yes. And you are suing her for evicting you from that place. You want a whole bunch of money. You're suing her for $10,000 for your moving expenses, for assault, for emotional distress because you had to move. Ms. Shaw says that your behavior caused you to be evicted. You violated the rules, and that's why you were served notice of eviction. So first, let me know when you started living at the property that is managed by the defendant. In 2018. Did you have a lease? Yes, I did. did do you have a copy of that lease with yes, you? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, so this initial lease was August of 2019, and it terminated on July 31st, 2020. It provided for three people to live in the apartment. Okay, was the lease renewed? Nope. Okay, and so then you became a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. And that was in February of 2020. They also increased the rent. That's okay, they're allowed to do that. That's a business. No, I know. They're allowed to do that. When your lease was extended on a month-to-month -month basis after February of 2020, would you tell me if the same people lived in the apartment as were on the original lease? No. So more people moved in? Yes. Who? That would be my sisters and my mother. Sisters? Yes. Two sisters? Yes. They and were... when did they move in? Maybe about, uh, maybe 2020, maybe. 
I'm not, couldn't really be positive. So that would have been in violation of your original lease? Yes. And it was an apartment that you were yes. renting. And the apartment complex has a pool. Yes, it does. And the incident around circumstances surrounding this eviction that was served on you, that happened in what month and year? It was in um, June of this year. How long, Ms. Shaw, have you been the property manager? Since the end of November of last year. November of 2021? Yes. And in November of 2021, did you know that there were additional people living in the house? Yes. And didn't tell her that they had to vacate, that it was in violation of the terms Not, of her underlying had, lease? I had that morning, actually, when the confrontation happened. No, I'm I had talking just... about, shh, pay attention. I... My question was, did you register any complaint with the plaintiff? about the additional people living there. Be very careful that you tell me the truth because I know that you think you may know where I'm going, but you don't. Did you make any complaint to her November, December, January, February, March, April, or May? The answer is either yes or no about the other people okay. living in the house. No. So I guess I'm going to start with you because an incident occurred that resulted in her being evicted, that you serving her with a notice of eviction. Right. Tell me when that took place, because I have to know what your reason was. That's a fair statement. Yes. Right. Okay. So in June 22, like I said, that morning I had served What that morning? Weekend, June 21st or something, I believe. What kind of letter were you serving on her? Um, I just gave them, mine is, uh, it's just a complaint notice, you know, saying that. Do you have a copy of that? I may. Do you know what she's talking about? Yes, I have a copy. I'd like to see it. There you go. Okay. Well, this is a letter that says you and your company were eating and drinking in the pool area. Even after I told them to stop, that it wasn't allowed, they did not stop. And there is absolutely no eating or drinking in the pool area. Okay, so that's the letter she yes. served to you, and that was on June 21st. That's the letter she served. Now, who was, eating, who was eating and drinking in the pool? That would be my sister. That wasn't just your sister. No, it was her and her friend. No, no, just a second. Let's get it together. So your sister, who wasn't supposed to be there, but they sort of let that skate. Oh. Well, who wasn't okay. supposed to be there. Okay. Okay, so your sister and who else? That would be my sister, um, her boyfriend, and two of her friends, or three of her friends, I think. Had they ever been to the pool before? My sister has, but not her friends. So the person who wasn't supposed to be living with you, that's your sister, Yes. invited her boyfriend and three other friends to the pool. She called and asked if it was okay first. She asked you? Yes. And you said fine? Yes. You didn't call the manager? No. Okay. And you are aware that there's no eating and drinking in the pool? That's not what it says on my lease. Is that what it says at the pool? Nope. Does it say anywhere in the house rules? Nope. Nope It's not an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer no. is no. No, ma'am, it is not. No. Now, when you've been living there for a long time, do you use the pool? Yes, I do. Ever had any trouble in the time from November of yep. last year? Ever had any complaint? Nope. Nope, nope is not sorry, an answer. Sorry, sorry, no sorry. is the answer. No, yeah. no complaint. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. And did you discuss with your sister and her friends that there were any rules that she had to abide by? No, I did not because I was not home yet. Stand up. First name is? Aaliyah. You were their boyfriend and three girlfriends. Any children? No. You know this lady? Yes. What happened when she came to tell you that there was no eating or drinking at the pool? So we were standing... Just, just what happened when she told she you? She came screaming at us, telling us that we needed to get the food out and that we needed to go. Get the food out? What kind of food had you brought in? It was just in? pizza and, like, a soda and water. So, you, so it wasn't a piece of fruit. You were having a meal there, pizza yes. Yes. and food. Had you ever seen your sister bring food into the pool area? Snacks, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not talking about snacks. Did she ever bring food into the pool area? No. What prompted you to order food into the pool area? It was a hot day and we were hungry and I'm not sure. You asked your sister if it was okay if you and your friends came. Yes. Since you never saw anybody, because usually there are signs posted yes. around a pool. I've lived in enough places to know in the Pool signs usually say no jumping yes. in the pool, no food or drink around the pool, right? Yes. Most pools say that. Yes. 
Did this pool say that? It just said, like you said, no jumping in the pool, no diving um, to come into the pool, but never said nothing about food, drinks, nothing like that. Really? Yes. Okay. So now you please establish to me, Ms. Shaw, that there was notice that there was no food and drink at the pool. Their pool addendum. May I see? And then also no guest addendum. Just a second. It's all part of their... Hold on. You're Melissa Duran. Yes, I am. And that's your signature. Yes. Yes. The pool is reserved exclusively for the use of residents of the building. That's what it says. Okay. That's what you signed. No diving in the pool area. No intoxicated persons. Okay. I just want you to show me here. First of all, the only thing that they are violating is that pool is reserved exclusively for the residents of the building. That's it here, but I don't see anything about food. The new pool addendum wasn't part of their contract. So when we put out the new one, it was it was for my more updated tenants, but we we didn't sweep them on the Hers food. We served them on the guests. Is what you're saying to me, the only thing that she signed is this, and there is no sign around the pool that says no eating or drinking. There is a sign by the do you have a copy I of it? I don't have a copy of Former property manager Tracy Shaw owes for a wrongful eviction and an assault. Okay, go ahead. Because she had moved in prior to them changing the pool addendum, I posted the new pool addendum on all of the doors. And I have actually text messages of Melissa asking me, can we, you know, the no floaties? And I said, well, of course, May I? you know, for oh. children and whatnot, but not big floaties. Okay. So she was acknowledging the pool addendum that I had. That I'll see. Now, she's going to show me your text messages to her. Yes. So you received the revised pool rules. Yes. And did the new pool rules say anything about guests? No, it did not. So if it said nothing about guests, you originally said that the pool is specifically reserved for residents of the complex. Yes. And according to you, the new pool rules, do they talk about having floaties in the pool? Yes, it did. Did it talk about having guests at the pool? Yeah, actually it did. And what did it say? It, there was no problem, just like on the, on the original lease. It no, was no, no, no. fine to have guests in the pool. No, that, that's if not what this says. This says that the pool is reserved for residents of the building only. Well, we were already told before that it was fine to have guests. This is the contract that you signed. Yes. Yes, I understand. Okay. So this is the first one that you signed, this one. Mm -hmm. And absent anything else, this says no guests at the pool. This says residents only. Okay. You say that it was the new rules allow you to have guests, or were they silent? There was nothing on there saying that you cannot have guests. It was okay. mainly just saying that you cannot have floaties, you cannot jump or run into the pool. Well, so, just a second. Did it say anything about food? No. Is there a new sign posted around the pool that talks about food? No, it doesn't. All I want to see is Miss Shaw, right. something in the new rules that talks about food. And I'm getting very bored with this. Now, when Miss Shaw came over and told you you couldn't have food, you had to get rid of the food, yeah. about what time was that? Probably like five, six. I'm not exactly too sure. And when had this food and stuff arrived? Was it? It was, we brought it. We were coming in with the food. We walked in with the food. She, I'm pretty sure she's seen second. this. So you and your group, five people, walked yes. in with dinner yes. to the pool area. And did the dinner include any alcoholic beverages no. like beer? No. Nope. What kind of drinks were there? It was Pepsi with soda. And what happened when Miss Shaw came over and told you you weren't allowed to have the food at the pool? She came very aggressively. She, okay, she came aggressively and she, she said, you're not allowed. She stormed out and screamed, get, out, get the food out and you guys need to leave. And so what did you do? I told her, okay, I'd get the food out and I made a call to my sister to come help me with the food. And as we were packing- Where was your sister? She was upstairs. So when you came out with the food, you came out of the apartment. No, we had just gotten there. We had, we were coming from another pool area that wasn't open. What other open. pool area? My boyfriend's friend. We were going to swim at his pool, but it wasn't available because there was too many people there. Were you at your boyfriend's house during the day? Uh, no, I was at school and they were all at work. So we all just like met up after everything. Okay, so you were asked by Miss Shaw to get the food out and then you called your sister. Yes, and I told her. And then what happened? And I told her if she could come get the food while we swam or if well, not, that we well, were going to leave. Why didn't she just get out? Well, because I was trying to help, because we were splitting like the check through with the money. So we're like splitting the pizza, who's getting what, and 
all of that. And before we even could leave, she stormed out again, screaming, saying, you guys are getting a notice, you guys are getting a notice, and running up the stairs to her because she was coming out. And she was like, you know, like, hey, like, what's going on? And then she was like, you guys are getting a notice. I'm tired of everybody, like, not listening and tell, coming to me with your problems. And then she, my sister was like, whoa, like, you know, like, hey, like, relax. I'm coming to get the food. And then she threw the paper and my sister backed up, like, you know. Okay. She, like, so what, went so aggressive. the letter, she yes. gave your sister the letter. It was a notice. She gave you the paper that said, this is a complaint. There are people in the pool who are eating, drinking. They don't belong here. They're not, whatever she said, here's your notice. Yes. Okay. And that was on the 21st of June. Then yes. what happened? Well, after she threw the paper at me, um, she turned back around, still yelling, and she stomped down the stairs, and I'm trying to tell her, you didn't give me time to come and get the food. And, and, and she slammed, she ran back in her apartment and slammed her door. And she went back to her apartment, and you went where? Back into my house. Okay, you went back into your house. And yes. what did you do when you went when back into your house? When I got back there, I texted her, telling her that I was sorry that they had food in the pool, and I did not know that, because I did not know at the time. Just a second. So, Ms. Duran, so that, let's cut to the chase, so that you knew they weren't supposed to have food in the pool, only snacks. Yeah, but I didn't know they bring it. I, the thing. Just a second. That's not what I asked okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. You knew that there was no food in the pool, only water and snacks. Okay, yes. So you knew that. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, if you know that and you have given, I'm just telling you what the law is. Mm -hmm. If you know that, that there is a rule and you don't convey that, that's your problem. Okay? Okay. All right, so that's June 21st when guests that you agreed to have in the pool. You didn't know that there was food there. You knew that there wasn't supposed to be food there. That knowledge is imparted to your guests. That's a legal assumption. I want to know what happened after June 21st. When were you served with a three-day notice to quit? I believe it was on the 24th. I'd like to see it. Okay. I have three of the same. They sent me three of them. I just have to see one. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, by a cash app, return any of the money. Okay, well, you served this three-day notice to quit, Ms. Shaw, and in it, you are alleging threatens to commit a crime. So I assume that the person, it talks about a statement, threatens to commit a crime. I assume that the threat was directed to you. Yes. In any event, you were given a three-day notice to quit, but actually you managed to get that extended to 30 days. Yes. And one of the things that you had to do was to hire an attorney. Yes. And when you hired an attorney, did you hire an attorney and pay a retainer? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I'd like to see proof of what you paid the attorney. I don't think I bring the one that pertained to the lawyer. What I do have is him finding out what the criminal act was. No. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. Landlord has a right to give you a 30-day notice and say, you have to quit the premises. You have no legal right to be there. My only question is, you were not given 30 days notice. You were given a three-day notice. And I'm not actually convinced that there was a basis to give you a three-day notice. The Duran has accused her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, of wrongfully evicting her. Tracy claims Melissa was violating apartment rules. Now, if you got 30 days, and the reason you got 30 days is because you retained an attorney, I'm prepared to look to see how much you paid the attorney, because that's an expense that you have that you wouldn't have had but for the three-day notice to quit. They're entitled to tell you to leave. I mean, yes. you're there with too many people living in the apartment. They've already had a kerfuffle because you allowed your sister and her boyfriend and friends to come to the pool. They were told no food. They ignored them. But I don't think any of that rises to the level of grounds to give you a three-day notice to quit. I think that if they want to tell you that you have to be out in 30 days, that's reasonable. But they didn't. They gave you a three-day notice, forcing you to hire an attorney. I'm prepared to give you the attorney's fees if you prove to me that you paid an attorney. I, I do have proof of that, but I do not have it with me. Okay. And how much did you pay him? That's an easy thing for me to verify. Um, I believe it was no. 1200 I want you to think about it carefully. No, it, it was 1200 because he had lowered it. He lowered it from 1400 to 1200 And you paid him by check or cash? I paid him in um, cash app is the only thing, only way I could 
Did he go to court with you? We never, we haven't. This is the first court we have been to. So how did he get you 30 days? Because I got the three-day notice and it kept saying I committed a criminal act. Okay, let's... So that was the reason why I obtained the lawyer so he can find out what the criminal act was. And just by phone calls, he got them to extend it to 30 days. So yes. you were never in court and you left after the 30 days? I left before the 30, I left on August 1st. Okay, and where did you go? I had to move all the way to Atwater, California. Is that where you live now? Yes, it is. And who lives with you? My husband and um, my young son. That's it, just the three of us. We moved into a smaller, more expensive place. Okay, and you left your sisters? And my mother. And your mother. They are some more completely different. Okay, what do you... This is in their lease about um, disturbances and threats. Listen, I've already made a determination that the three-day notice should have been a 30-day notice to leave. I don't think that anything that I've heard today rises to the level of giving people who've been in the apartment as long as they had, especially over pizza, requires a three-day notice. Yeah. So the only question that I'm entertaining on behalf of the plaintiff and the only monetary award that I'm going to contemplate are attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, return any of the money since he never had to go to court for you? No, he did not. Just a second. If I called him well, right now, would he tell me that you paid him yes. $1,200? Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Though what I was going to tell you is that I did not have enough to pay him completely. I still owe him $250. So you didn't pay him. So you paid him $950. Okay, I, okay. I'm sorry. What do you mean, okay? I didn't, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't. You, so you paid him $950? Yes. I'm awarding you $950, which are your attorney's fees, for the reason that, for, I'm speaking, for the reasons that I've stated, because they have an absolute right to give you a 30-day notice tell you to leave, and there was a basis for it, actually. And you know, there was a basis for saying, your guests, which is you, are not abiding by the rules. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Right now, we do not intend to keep you as a tenant. We're giving you 30 days notice to find another place. I think that would have been absolutely a problem. Speaking would have been absolutely appropriate. I think a three-day notice to quit was inappropriate given the level of infraction. So I'm awarding you the council fees because that's what it took to get you your 30 days. This case is over. Thank you very much.